Hello, this is Worship with Mount Olivet United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Jeff Goodman, and along with Pastors Ed Walker and Tier Hardy, we welcome you to worship. We are very glad you are here. Because we are all about making things easy for you, throughout worship today, everything you need to say will be right here on the screen. Your faithfulness is amazing. We genuinely appreciate your ongoing financial gifts to the church. Because of you, we are able to keep our ministry and our missions alive. It's easy to contribute on our website. Your giving supports our mission work in the community and the world and makes possible what we are doing right now, sharing our worship together literally around the world. I also invite you to visit our website to register your attendance in this worship service. There you will find a link to share your prayer concerns with us as well. If you are a parent of a young child, I have two announcements for you. First, families with children between two years old and fifth grade should have received an online children's ministry survey. If you didn't get the survey, please reach out to Linnea Carlson, our Director of Children and Family Ministries. Please take a few minutes to complete the survey. It will be a big help as we determine how we can best support you and your family during this time of pandemic. Second, every autumn we present our third graders with a personalized children's Bible as a gift from Mount Olivet. If you have a child entering third grade, please contact Linnea Carlson. If you are part of the Mount Olivet community, we would love to give your third grader a Bible. Here at Mount Olivet, we have a focus on increasing our discipleship. A Disciples Pathway is a six-week program that guides individuals in taking the next step in discipleship and becoming dynamic, engaged followers of Jesus Christ. The study combines a Wesleyan understanding of our growth in God's love and grace with the time-tested practices of spiritual discipline expressed in the membership vows to uphold the church with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Participants will develop spiritual practices, discover unique gifts, and become engaged in ministry that brings transformation in their own lives, the lives of others, and the world. The introductory session will be held on September 9th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. In this session, we look forward to sharing our United Methodist heritage, how God is working in and through the people of Mount Olivet, and how you can participate in our mission of creating disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world by taking the next step along the path as a follower of Jesus Christ. It is a wonderful opportunity for you to connect with other disciples and find support and encouragement as you continue to grow in your faith. Sessions will continue every Wednesday through October 21st. If you'd like more information or want to participate in this great opportunity, please let Pastor Tier know with an email. Every week, Ed or Tier or I greet you like this as we begin worship. We update you with some news, invite you to participate in worship and activities, and we share a word of hope. This week, I also want to let you know how much we truly miss you, all of you. We long for the day we can safely be together again and pray that you are staying well and adapting to this new world. And now, adopt your worship attitude, get comfortable, turn up the volume, and Dr. Shaner, take us to church.
You who are many are transformed to become one in Christ. We who are many are called to worship God, the three in one. Let us worship God. Now let us pray together. Ever-present God, who is at the side of every creature in creation, renew our lives so that we may discern and do your will, what is good and acceptable and perfect. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Romans 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. Hello. How's everybody doing? Good. So in the scripture we just heard, part of it said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's kind of a hard, what does that even mean? That's kind of hard to hear, isn't it? So I found another translation. I want to read it to you, okay? This is another way somebody used the words. It said, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Recognize what God wants from you and respond. God brings the best out of you. So, you know, when we do stuff, like when I see you guys with these things all day long, how do I feel about that? Um, not quite good. Not quite good. Why is that? Because we, you want us to learn and to which These are not going to help us learn about God or, like, honor God in any way. Yeah, because we're just playing and, and she said, oh, don't play on those. I want you to learn because if you just watch, you won't be able to learn. Exactly, exactly. So if we were going to think about some other things we could do with our mind. Okay, so this is what we're doing with our mind some. And we're going to do some other things with our mind. Let's see what I have here. Oh, what do I have, Marta? The flute case. Marta's flute case. Why do I have your flute case here? I need to practice it, and practicing it is good because when I play my flute for God, He likes to hear my music. God loves to hear your music. That's right. That's right. Okay. And she wants her to learn how to play songs because if you want to play songs in the summer, you can like be able to be a good singer and a good dancer. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's see what else I have. Oh, okay. What do I have here? If you Paintings. did that one, you Art, did that artwork. one. Artwork. Artwork. What does um, that have to do with your mind and God? Marta. You can draw art for God. He you can draw art it. for God. And you can learn how to paint nice. You can learn how to paint nice. So when I see things like a sunset and a flower, how does that remind me of God? Um. Go ahead, Betty. It reminds you of God 
if you like it and it looks very pretty. Yeah. Marta, what are you thinking? I think that both the sunset and the flower are both things that God made. And so that's kind of what reminds me, like, God made those things and now I'm here to draw them for Him. That's right. That's right. So lots of different ways to kind of transform your mind. And this passage says kind of focus on God. And when you make your decisions about how to spend your time and what to do and what to play with, we can think about God. I have one more thing over here, I think. Oh, I had two books. That's Betty's book from her baptism. And that's Marcia's third grade Bible. How do they help us think about God? Marta. Um, when you read in the Bible, you hear stories of God's great things that he's been doing. That's right. Betty, what do you think about when you read that book? Um, it helps God know that we're learning, mm -hmm. and it helps God that we know we're reading and we're helping him. Mm -hmm. So I think when we think about God, that helps our mind kind of focus on God and think about what God would have us do. Okay? So you try to be transformed by renewing your mind or just staying focused on God. All right, let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, help us, help us, continue to learn about you, continue to learn about you, so we can focus on you, so we can focus on you, and follow you, and follow you. Amen. Amen. Bye. Thank you, girls. Bye-bye. Thank you. Having been born in the mid-80s and growing up in the 90s, you could say that I, along with my fellow millennials, are the product of the original consumers of reality television. Reality TV began in May of 1992 with the airing of the first episode of Real World. Each season, the location of the show would change. New York, Miami, San Francisco, Los Angeles, London, Seattle. But the premise of the show would not. This is the true story of seven strangers picked to live in a house, work together, and have their lives taped to find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. Real World exposed topics that for the time had been considered taboo in front of company. Sex, prejudice, religion, abortion, sexuality, AIDS, death, politics, and substance abuse. With these topics on the table, what would happen when seven to eight strangers set aside the norms of politeness while being filmed 24-7? The truth, Paul is speaking in Romans 12, is that living in God's love is the only true reality, unblemished by the brokenness of this world. The good news in this truth is that God's love will transform us. And we can, in turn, transform the world. For 11 chapters, Paul has been petitioning the Roman church to get their heads on straight. Paul had been making the argument that if only the church, disciples of Jesus Christ who had banded together, sharing life with one another, if only those people could learn to accept the real world, they would see things differently. In seeing things differently, they would live differently. They would be different. The problem for the Roman church and us today is that Paul's demand for us to not be conformed to this world, a world marred and contaminated by sin, raises the question, to what world are we to conform? I appeal to you, therefore, Brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Paul is pointing us towards a way of living that contrasts the arrogance, division, hatred, violence, and lack of empathy of the world that will consume us if we are not careful. 
Paul is extending an invitation to the church. He is pleading with the church to engage in a debate over what is real and what is normal. We live in a world that wants to convert us. This past week, the Democratic National Convention did its best to convince us that their vision of the real world will save us from ourselves. And next week, the Republican National Convention will do the same. Primetime speeches, flashy advertisements that make us wonder if Siri or Alexa are really listening to us 24-7. And perfectly curated video montages are intended to convert us to their reality. Political conventions are low-hanging fruit. Every day, there are powers in our world. Lesser gods that we lean towards, that attempt to convince us that their way of seeing the world is the best for us. Their real world will make our lives easier, less stressful, and more enjoyable, they tell us. While that might sound manipulative, it is. The world is seeking to co-opt you to a cheap false existence while God is offering an authentic reality based in love. Through worship, scripture, prayer, fellowship, through church just like this, we are to learn about the ex and experience God's reality. We are allowed to see behind the veil in a way impossible for the worldly. Every time we gather to worship, proclaiming and receiving God's word, we are attempting to convert, to convince one another that the reality of life in Jesus Christ, a life that begins at the waters of our baptism and a life that cannot be contained by the grave, is the only reality that has the ability to course correct the arrogance, division, hatred, violence, and lack of empathy of the world. Every week we gather for worship, whether we are gathering in person or in the cloud. We are laying ourselves before the altar as a living sacrifice, mind, body, and soul. We do this together as a community, living in a world that believes arrogance, division, hatred, violence, and lack of empathy to be marks of the real world, when the reality of Jesus, the reality we proclaim week after week, speaks a truth that few want to hear. But once they have heard it, once they have experienced it, they cannot look back. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has flipped the world on its head. Before a world conforming to sin could establish itself as the real world, Jesus countered it. For those who find their lives will lose them, and those who lose their lives because of me will find them. The way of Jesus, the real world life of a disciple, is consumed more by healing the sick, proclaiming God's truth, feeding the hungry, loving our enemies, and praying for those who persecute us, and less by patronizing the poor, sustaining disdain for our enemies, and not being willing to pray for those who are against you. This is the real world, Christ's reign, healing, truth, empathy, love, and prayer that we proclaim week after week, Sunday after Sunday. It is a proclamation that transforms us through the power of the one who overcame everything that has and everything that will continue to attempt to separate us from one another. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. The transformation that Paul speaks of is something we both look forward to and recognize it has already happened. The advent of Christ in the world, his death and resurrection, has already transformed the cosmos. The world was not real until Jesus upended the powers and principalities on the cross and in the tomb. We now live in the realist world, already transformed by Christ. Church at its best 
is just renewing our minds once a week to realize what Christ has already accomplished in spite of and for us. The transformation we seek and the transformation we experience does not come as the result of our greatness or our ability to transform ourselves. To not be conformed to this world and instead being transformed means that we rely on the greatness and the ability of God. We are transformed. The world around us is formed by what has happened in Christ and by what is happening today in worship. What we do tomorrow through the rest of the week is a direct result of the collision that has happened here in worship. A collision between the world as we know it, broken and in need of rescue, and the real world, established in the truth and power of Christ's ultimate reign. This is the world when Christ reigns over all of creation, when the sick are healed, division mended, and enemies forgive one another. The drama of MTV's real world set the stage for our obsession with reality TV and its consequences. Once participants in the show realized stardom was just around the corner, the reality of reality TV took a back seat. As much as we try to create a real world for ourselves, leaning into whatever reality most benefits us at the time, Christ invites us to something more. Paul is urging us to lean into a world, this world that we are a part of, that has shifted, and to open our eyes to the reality of God's ultimate reign in Christ, rather than offering ourselves to lesser altars with shallow promises, we are invited to be active participants in the kingdom of God, a real world that is present now, initiated by God's love and sustained by God's power and grace. Amen. songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song sung by flaming tongues above. Raise the mount I'm fixed upon it. Mount of Yeah.
Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I fixed upon it, mount of thy unchanging love. God of all, thank you for hearing these prayers, for the human family with whom we share this world, those closest to us and those whose names we will never know. We give you thanks and ask your help in living into our identity as your children. For the world we share with all creation, the plants and animals we see each day, and the wilderness we have never seen. We give you thanks and ask your help in living into our identity as stewards of your earth. For local, national, and international leaders, those whose policies we appreciate and those with whom we struggle, we give you thanks and ask that you be at their side, guiding them to act in justice and mercy. For joys and concerns that occupy our thoughts today, those we have spoken aloud and those we ponder inwardly. We give you thanks and ask that you be at our side, guiding us to recognize that our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Hear the prayers we lift in silence. Accept and heed all these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. In the reality of Christ's reign, the real world was established as God's kingdom. And we find the transformation we seek. We are invited by God's grace to share that transformation with the world, being part of God's transformative work in the world. Until we meet again, May the love of God, our Creator, be yours. May you be filled with the amazing grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the power of the Holy Spirit be yours. Amen.
Where's Peaky though? Peaky! He's sleeping. Can we just try one shot with him? And it, I have to drag him out from under there. Yeah, then we'll just try one shot with him. And no, it, and it, no, just... <laughs> and then he can walk away if he wants. No! Fine, no cat. 